Good evening. Welcome to The Truth About Inflammation. For those of you who don't know, we're Forces of Nature Wellness Clinic. I'm Dr. Pamela Frank, naturopathic doctor at Forces of Nature. We were founded in 1999. We provide a full slate of wellness services to the Young and Eglinton community of Toronto. We offer everything from acupuncturists, chiropractors, naturopaths, osteopaths, dietitians, and psychotherapists to enhance people's health. What is inflammation? Inflammation is a biological response triggered by your immune system. When irritants or pathogens are damaging your cells, your immune system signals the inflammatory response. Infections, wounds, and any damage to tissue would not be able to heal without an inflammatory response. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, inflammation is your body's first line of defense against harm. It is your body's attempt to self-protect to begin the healing process. In the short term, this process is called acute inflammation. Bad. Long-term inflammation lasting for prolonged periods of several months to years is called chronic inflammation. And the ugly. Chronic inflammation can eventually contribute to several diseases and conditions, including heart disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Let's take a deeper look into the ugly side of chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation can result from the following. Number one, when your body fails to eliminate the cause of acute inflammation, such as an infectious organism like yeast or other parasites, the harmful agent remains in the affective tissue, causing something called a latent infection. Exposure to a low level of a particular irritant or foreign material including industrial chemicals or particulate air pollutants that cannot be eliminated. Number three, an autoimmune disorder in which your immune system attacks healthy tissue. For more information on autoimmune disorders, watch our video on combating autoimmunity. And number four, biochemical inducers leading to excess oxidative stress, my mitochondrial dysfunction, and increased production of free radical molecules. The World Health Organization ranks chronic diseases as one of the greatest threats to human health. Years of research conclude that diseases that are related to chronic inflammation are the most significant cause of death in the world. Research has identified some common signs and symptoms that develop as a result of chronic inflammation. Number one, body pain. Number two, constant fatigue and insomnia. Number three, depression, anxiety, and mood disorders. Number four, gastrointestinal complications like constipation, diarrhea, and acid reflux. Number five, weight gain. And number six, frequent infections. Many diseases have been attributed to chronic inflammation. Some examples include number one, asthma. Number two, heart disease. Number three, neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. Number four, obesity. Number five, periodontitis. Number six, rheumatoid arthritis. Number seven, sinusitis. Number eight, type two diabetes. And number nine, ulcerative colitis. Numerous risk factors have been identified that promote a low level inflammatory response. These include number one, your age, two, obesity, three, diet, four, smoking, five, low levels of reproductive hormones, six, stress, and number seven, sleep disorders. Can you think of what most of these risk factors have in common? These risk factors, besides your age, are controllable through lifestyle changes. We'll spend the remainder of our time together discussing ways to prevent chronic inflammation. Smoking is a significant contributor to inflammation and is a lifestyle factor that is controllable. Cigarette smoking is associated with lowering the production of anti-inflammatory molecules and inducing inflammation. You can always talk with your naturopathic doctor for help with quitting. Some of my patients have had success with the following Alan Carr's program. The website for that is alancar.com, spelled A-L-L-E-N C-A-R-R dot com.
One of the best ways to reduce inflammation lies in your refrigerator. An anti-inflammatory diet should include foods such as tomatoes, olive oil, green leafy vegetables such as spinach, kale, and collards, nuts like almonds and walnuts, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, herring, and sardines, and fruits such as strawberries, blueberries, cherries, and oranges. These foods are high in natural antioxidants and polyphenols, which are protective compounds found in plants that reduce inflammation. If you're looking for a complete diet overhaul, try the Mediterranean diet. The foods listed previously are major components of a Mediterranean diet. Numerous studies have now shown that the Mediterranean diet is associated with weight loss and reduced risk of heart attacks, strokes, type 2 diabetes, and premature death. Here are some sample meals for the Mediterranean diet. Day 1, for breakfast you might have Greek yogurt with strawberries and oats. For lunch, you may have a salad with avocado, nuts, and seeds that's drizzled with some olive oil. Dinner might be a, a filet of salmon with some salad also drizzled with olive oil and a piece of fruit for dessert. Day two, maybe steel cut oats with some nuts and berries. Lunch might be a piece of salmon left over from the night before with some salad. And then dinner is a salad with tomatoes, olives, feta cheese, and walnuts. When it comes to reducing inflammation in your body, it's not only about the foods you eat, but also the foods you don't eat. Try to avoid or limit these foods as much as possible. Refined carbohydrates such as white bread and pastries, french fries and other deep fried foods, soda and other sugar sweetened beverages, red meat such as burgers and steak, and processed meat such as hot dogs and sausage, margarine, shortening, and lard. Another diet that can be used to keep inflammation in check is the low glycemic index diet. The low glycemic index or low GI diet is based on the concept of the glycemic index. This is a scale from one to 100 that ranks foods according to their effect on your blood sugar levels. There are three GI ranges. Low GI foods rank 55 or less. Medium GI foods rank 56 to 69 and high GI foods are 70 or more. A good resource for this is a website called mendoza.com. The exact address is mendoza.com forward slash GI dot htm. Again, mendoza.com forward slash GI dot htm. Studies have shown that the low GI diet may result in weight loss, reduced blood sugar levels, and lower the risks of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. When following the low glycemic index diet, incorporate the following low GI foods. Fruit such as apples, strawberries, apricots, peaches, plums, pears, and kiwi. Vegetables such as carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, celery, tomatoes, leafy greens, and zucchini. Legumes such as lentils, chickpeas, butter beans, and kidney beans. Dairy products such as milk, cheese, and low-fat yogurt. Meat, fish, poultry, nuts, and seeds. Exercise is another essential step in reducing inflammation. Try to participate in 30 to 45 minutes of aerobic exercise and 10 to 25 minutes of weight or resistance training at least four to five times per week. Stress signals your body to produce a hormonal response known as fight or flight. While stress serves as a protection mechanism to alert us to harm, many people today are living in a state of chronic stress. Chronic stress causes stress-related hormones to be continuously present in your body, causing inflammation. For more information about the effect of chronic stress on your immune system, check out our latest blog post at forcesofnature.ca forward slash blog. It's all about the effect of chronic stress on your immune system. Chronic stress causes stress-related hormones to be continuously present in your body and they cause inflammation. There are countless techniques for managing stress and some can double as physical exercise. A few common methods include yoga, meditation, guided imagery, 
gratitude journaling, deep breathing, and walking. Getting restful sleep every night is essential for combating inflammation. While we sleep, our body performs key healing and restoration processes. The average healthy adult needs seven to nine hours of sleep each night. Are you getting enough? If you wake up feeling tired or you feel sluggish during the day, you need more sleep. If you're having difficulty getting to sleep or staying asleep, try developing a nighttime routine to help signal your body when it's time to rest. Avoid eating or drinking caffeine or alcohol in the hours before bed. Participate in calming activities such as going for a walk, meditation, or gentle stretching. Try turning off electronics an hour before going to sleep. Take a warm bath or read a book. What you do as part of your routine is up to you. Just keep in mind a clutter-free, cool, very dark room is ideal for adequate sleep. If you suspect you may have a hormonal imbalance, your naturopathic doctor can perform a simple blood test to determine which hormones may be off and how to correct imbalances. Thank you for joining us today. Chronic inflammation has become more prevalent over the years and is linked to a number of diseases as we've shown. While inflammation is essential for wound healing, chronic inflammation can wreak havoc on healthy tissues. The good news is there are ways to reduce your risk by making lifestyle changes. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments or feel free to email me at pfranknd at forcesofnature.ca. If you're interested in working with us to reduce inflammation or to improve any aspect of your health, please call our office at 416-481-0222 or you can book online on our website anytime at forcesofnature.ca. If you'd like to learn more about your immune system, check out last week's webinar, The Role of Immunity. Thank you again. Have a lovely evening. My name is Dr. Pamela Frank, naturopathic doctor at Forces of Nature Wellness Clinic.